ಯುವಂತಾ ಪ್ರವೇಶ ಮಮ ವಾಚ ಮಿಮಾಂ ಪ್ರಸುಪ್ತಾನ್ ಸಂಜೀವಯ ತಕಿಲ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಧರ ಸ್ವಧಾಂ ಅನ್ಯಾಂ ಸಹಸ್ತ ಚರಣ ಶ್ರವಣ ಸ್ವಗಾದೀನ್ ಪ್ರಾಣ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಪುರುಷಾಯ ಕಥಾಂಚನ ಸ್ಮೃತೆಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ದುಸ್ಕರ ಸುಕರ ಭವೇತ್ ವಿಸ್ಮೃತೆ ವಿಪರೀತ ಸ್ಯಾಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಮಾಮಕ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ವೀಕ್ಲಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮಂತ್ ಭಾಗವತ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೊ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಅವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸುತ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆಸ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ವೆನ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಸುಖದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೊ ವಿ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವೇರ್ ದೇ ಹಾವ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ದಟ್ ವೈ ಸುಖದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗೂಢ ಮೂಢ ಇವೇ ಅತ್ತೆ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ಇ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ uh not as advanced so we discussed the very important vaishnava quality of self effacing self effacing means not showing off it is exactly opposite of the material uh, world where you know you fluff your uh, bio data with lot of things to impress your potential employer but here in vaishnava society we don't play our achievements and we discuss in great detail why a vaishnava is self effacing because we understand that time will destroy everything and this world is not our permanent abode so we discussed all of this now we'll continue the discussions on shukdev goswami the next few verses text number 5 6 7 and 8 i think today we'll cover uh yeah we will cover 5 uh, to 8 today <clears throat> and then we can uh, we can take it forward okay so all of you have access to text number 5 so you can all repeat after me drishtva nuyantam rishimatma jamapanagnam drishtva nuyantam rishimatma jamapanagnam ದೇವ್ಯೋರಿಹಾಪರಿದುರ್ನ ಸುತ ಚಿತ್ರ ತದ್ವೀಕ್ಷ ಪೃಚ್ಛತಿ ಮುನೌ ಜಗದುಸ್ತವಾಸ್ತಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಪುಂಬಿಧಾನ ತು ಸುತ ವಿಭಿಕ್ತ ದೃಷ್ಟೇ while shri vyasadev was following his son beautiful young damsels who were bathing naked covered their bodies with cloth although shri vyasadev himself was not naked but they had not done so when his son had passed the sage inquired about this and the young ladies replied that his son was purified and when looking at them made no distinction between male and female but that the sage made such distinctions so this is another glory of sukhdev goswami he was so transcendental that he was first of all 16 year old he had a well formed body he was not a small baby and as soon as he was born he started walking off and he walked through a place where girls were bathing in a pond naked and they saw him but they didn't bother to cover their bodies because they felt they they felt he is so pure that he doesn't discriminate between anybody but right behind him his father was following and he was the age of their grandfather <laughs> but the girls immediately covered their body because they felt he is a grahastha and to follow the maryada to follow that etiquette they covered their bodies so this is very interesting about uh, sukhdev goswami's very advanced position is being revealed here last time we already discussed how he was not showing off his qualities now let's see what further see basically the point here is sukhdev goswami was unaffected so <clears throat> see
see during those days people would take baths in the ponds in villages so they had separate ponds for men and women and shukde goswami was like a small child you know he was so pure that for him it didn't make any difference he didn't see a women as women or men as men he didn't separate he saw them all as spirit souls that was his level we are not on that level that's why we have maryada you know we have etiquettes in terms of dealing with men and women the way men deal with women and women deal with men but for for shukde goswami it was absolutely transcendental he was beyond this material world now the verse is very interesting that he is walking completely unaffected by the women and uh, you know and nobody felt disturbed that is the best part neither he felt disturbed nor the women thought you know why is this guy going around naked <laughs> like naga babas you know nobody felt disturbed it was all you know sometimes that energy of this you can feel that energy of disturbance but there was energy of purity everywhere so now if if like you know if there is a crowd in the temple we have sometimes classes so we see sometimes a small child now we have men sitting on this section the women sit on this section but sometimes you see a child maybe a 4 year old or 5 year old boy a child may go and run into the ladies section nobody raises an eyebrow mm-hmm. nobody I mean, it's all it's okay but if a grown up man go up and sits on a ladies lap there then people will say are you those ka bolt not lose ho gaya people say like that right so that means there is certain things expected because of certain age certain maryada certain culture but he shukde goswami always a 16 year old boy guda mood ivayate last verse last week we discussed he was completely indifferent to any bodily identity and now they are going deeper into his personality that <coughs> he was so highly realized but he concealed and presented himself as a madman and the next verse reveals his mood and how he presented himself so we will discuss that now sonakarishi says that shukde goswami was so absorbed that nobody recognized him in krishna you also absorbed in krishna so text number 6 you can please repeat after me all of you have access <coughs> to the verse okay. katam malakshita paure katam malakshita paure samprapta kuru jangalan samprapta kuru jangalan unmatta muka jadava vicharan gaja savahe how was he he means sukhdev goswami the son of vyasa recognized by the citizens when he entered the city of hastinapura now delhi after wandering in the provinces of kuru and jangala appearing like a madman dumb and retarded again we see this again it is being in one sense repeated in a different way that is concealing his real position now real position is what should be goswami real position is the pure devotee of krishna he is not at all affected by the young women bathing in that pond and people actually thought he is a madman he is walking by now internally he was absorbed but externally unrecognized many of us we go through the opposite internally we are not absorbed in krishna but externally we are recognized by the world so this is the wake up call this episode we read to be shaken come on where are you you know <laughs> so these two verses reveal the the 5 and 6 which we discussed now his level of advanced now if you see the purport of the previous verse his inner position is also revealed there i'll just read a little bit from that purport the ladies who were bathing could understand the mind of a man simply by studying his demeanor just as by looking at a child one can understand how innocent he is shukde goswami is a young boy 16 years old and therefore all the parts of his body were developed he was naked also and so were the ladies but because shukde goswami is transcendental to sex relations the way where are they yeah the way he looked at them was very innocent and had nothing to do with worldly affairs somebody will have to mute you know there is some sound okay somebody will have to mute one of you hari krishna because there is sound coming okay he was naked also so okay the way he looked at them was very innocent and nothing to do with worldly affairs the ladies by their special qualifications could sense this at once and therefore they were not very concerned about it but when his father passed 
the ladies quickly dressed mishila vyasde was an old man and was fully dressed and the ladies were exactly like his children or grandchildren yet they reacted to his presence according to the social custom because he played the part of a householder a householder has to distinguish between a male and female are krishna one of you has kept dina mata ji can you can you mute yourself the sound coming is it disturbing thank you she is muted she is muted thank you are krishna so vyasde was an old man and was fully dressed and the ladies were exactly like his children or grandchildren yet they reacted to his presence according to the social custom because he played the part of a householder a householder has to distinguish between a male and a female otherwise he cannot be a householder <laughs> one should therefore attempt to know the distinction between body and soul without any distinction between male and female as long as such a distinction is there one should try to not become one should not try to become a sanyasi like shukdev goswami <laughs> this is very very interesting you know it's not you can't take sanyas and you can't uh, pretend to be advanced like shukdev goswami this is a very very big warning shila prabhupada is giving here now this this conversation with the ladies and the vyasdev now this is like a verse given here but one of our vaishnava commentators who is uh, our vaishnava acharya has given detailed purport to these verses of bhagavad so one of our commentators shri vishnu chakravarti thakur he has paraphrased this conversation between the women and vyasdev and is presented it this is 500 years ago <laughs> 400 years ago very beautiful he says that um, when vyasdev was walking and he looked at the girls suddenly you know they were kind of they became clumsy they started covering their bodies so he smiled and he said uh, you know how come you are completely indifferent to my son he is a young boy your age <clears throat> so the girls told him that your son although he is 16 years old is very advanced and therefore we didn't feel the need to cover our bodies we didn't feel that he is looking at us in any other way so he said how can you know he is advanced vyasdev asked so they said we saw in his eyes so vyasdev said uh, wh- what can you see in his eyes <laughs> for the lady said we saw we have a sixth sense the lady said and we can know uh, that he was innocent but then vishana chakravarti thakur writes that vyasdev is asking these girls that what do you mean you have sixth sense so then the ladies tell him that we can see the intention of a man by seeing his eyes <laughs> so then vishnu jagat thakur again he writes that looking at the eyes of men many women can know the intention hmm? so therefore uh, uh, so he writes a statement there that women have the power to know the inner truth of men by looking at their eyes i like the sentence women have the power to know the inner truth of men by looking at their eyes so kya cultural aspects there hain bhagavatam is simply it's not simply about you know chanting hari krishna <laughs> there are so many other things that come up like last time also we discussed about self effacing qualities you will see lot of uh, you know other uh, socio cultural factors also can be seen in shrimad bhagavatam <clears throat> actually there is a joke among the sanyasis you know if somebody wants to take sanyas there is a joke which is not popularly spoken about you want sanyas well you have to you have to be interviewed by a panel and that panel will consist of five women <laughs> <laughs> and they will look into your eyes all five of them and then they'll give a certificate <laughs> okay pass <laughs> then you can take sanyas so like that there is a joke among sanyasis so then basically uh, vyasdev is also pure only we have to understand he is also shaktavesh avatar but he is playing the role of a grahastha so when you play that role let's like varaha dev varaha dev is lord krishna was come in the form of a boar so there is a certain role he plays lifting mother earth like that so a role a certain avatar has a certain role so vyasdev's role is as a grahastha he has to discriminate and he played that role now the lesson we learn from these verses is that we have to hear about these great souls and aspire to reach that stage where we are detached from distinction between male and female and see everyone is equal at the spiritual level now we artificially cannot do that 
So Srila Prabhupada writes in one of those purports here that at least theoretically one must be convinced that a living entity is neither male nor female. The outward dress is made of matter. This is matter by material nature to attract the opposite sex. Now, this is the way it has been made. And one keeps, one is, remains in material existence. A liberated soul is above this perverted distinction. He doesn't see this. He does not distinguish between one living entity and another. For him, they are all one and the same spirit. The perfection of the spiritual vision is a liberated stage and Srila Sukhdev Goswami attained that stage. Srila Vyasdev was also in that transcendental stage, but because he was in the householder life, he did not pretend to be a liberated soul as a matter of custom. So do not pretend to be a liberated soul. Just know your level you know, and be humble. <laughs> we know your position. Uh, like we, when we preach, sometimes people respect us and they, they look at us for what we speak or what we do. But they do not know our struggles. So we have to constantly remind ourselves. Phate jute pehenke asman pe chade Mere sapne amesha aukat se bade Aukat se bade nahi honne chahi Apne aukat mein rehna chahi So that is very important. You know, once I was in uh, Brussels, Belgium, two years back. So there was this, all the teachers from England had come. They had a uh, three-day retreat. So I was the main speaker for three days, morning, evening, where to do sessions. Now, you know, in West, there's a very different culture. They, when it's, it's very interesting. They, they're, they're, their conversations and uh, discussions and interactions are very open. And vulnerability is also appreciated. So one lady in the middle of the session, she raised her hand. She said, what is the biggest challenge of being a monk? Now, in India, no ladies will ask that question in a public forum. <laughs> That's how the culture is. Now, she asked it. And till then, you know, my classes, my interactions were like, it was technical. It was a presentation on the mind and all that. I'd written the book on mind your mind. So I was speaking about mind, intelligence, ego, and all of that. So it was getting a little boring also, I think. But when she asked this question, I had not planned. It spontaneously came out of my mouth. I said, the biggest challenge is a lack of companionship. <laughs> and they were like, they didn't expect to hear that answer. And I also didn't, that, now that I said it, you know, sometimes it happens. I don't know if I've experienced it in conversations. You know, you say something and then when, once you said that sentence, then you realize what it is saying. Some people say something and some people say something after saying something. I have said it, now I have to... I can't say, I can't take it back. Words once spoken, you know, it's like a glass once broken, it cannot be joined. Now it's gone. So then I had to... Now I was like, I had to then speak. I had to be very candid. So then I spoke about the challenges in the renounced order. Then I said, that is challenges in the grass ashram also. But therefore, we have divisions within renounce order. So then I explained to them about the levels of sannyas and the celibate life and the aspirations and all of that. So then they were pacified and they were happy also. But this kind of discussions very rarely happen in an Indian society. Because in India, people look at renounce order as somebody who is already attained a state, which is there, which is true for sannyasis. But for sadhakas, those are aspiring to reach that stage, they are voluntarily accepted this as a challenge to rise to that level. So anyway, the point I'm saying is, uh, one cannot, Prabhupada is writing here, one cannot pretend to be a liberated soul as a matter, you know, one has to be humble. Like in Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada writes, a sincere sweeper in the street is better than a charlatan meditator. All right? So one has to be very careful about these aspects. In fact, in, in, in our discussions, I've seen Many uh, brahmacharis who have been in the renounce, like I've been in the ashram for 24 years now. Many of us, who have got, when we were younger, what we thought, and now, there's a lot of difference. Mm. Just like grahasthas, you know. I've seen many couples, like when I when joined the ashram, they got married at that time. So there's a different idea about married life. And now after 25 years, they look back with a lot of sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> so life changes. We evolve. We learn. You know. So... So therefore, one has to be authentic and vulnerable to the right kind of people. If you're vulnerable to the right kind of people, that vulnerability is a strength. It's not that we go around shamelessly telling everyone. That's not needed. You don't have to bewilder everyone. But there has, there has to be at least somewhere you are where you are authentic and that way you become peaceful. Otherwise, we take the external, uh, the social uh, dealings too seriously and we get disconnected from our own selves. But then we take an advantage of us being vulnerable to the wrong. Thing. Exactly, exactly. You can be exploited. Yeah. 
I'm glad you said. Sorry that. about that. No, no, no. I don't know if I could enter. No, no. It's, it's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay. We can be exploited if you are vulnerable to the wrong person. So if you have somebody close and then you are vulnerable, that's a strength. <clears throat> so anyway, the point is, one cannot pretend to be more advanced than what he is. That is the essence of this section. But at the same time, as students of Bhagavatam. we should be ready to understand theoretically that ultimately we are not male not female this is a covering for the body we have to know that this is a dress and one day we have to transcend this now right now we are following the culture right like we understand and we hear scriptures and we want to come to a stage where we don't make any distinction between male and female that much spiritual advancement we want to achieve <clears throat> because we understand as bhakti yogis bhakti yogis that ultimately there is only one male krishna and we are all prakriti he is purusha he is prakriti in the sense we are the feminine aspect and this is just for a distinction we are saying male female so krishna is the supreme purusha and we are prakriti and we are giving him service we are giving him enjoy we are giving him ananda and we are devotees so that's the mood in which we serve now all living entities whether a male female whether a tiger or a tree all of us are prakriti even amongst human beings male is also prakriti so that way what happens then we see everyone equally and we see ourselves as devotees of lord now all the different species are created by the material energy and if you see all living entities they are made of pancha mahabhut this is this is not rocket science and everybody knows earth water fire air ether this is what whether a body or the tree which is all made up of these components now even this table for example has these elements you know room also now if you see this body will eventually go away this table will also not exist eventually and body bhagavatam especially says the human body it will ultimately become ashes earth or stool depending on which culture you are from the body is treated like that so therefore in the 13th chapter of gita echoing the same mood the 13th chapter of gita explains two concepts kshetra and kshetrajna kshetra means a field so the bhagavad gita says that we all have been given a field of activity that is called kshetra and the one who enjoys this field of activity is called kshetrajna the knower of the field so the bhagavad gita says that every body is like a kshetra and every body has a kshetrajna the knower of that body and that knower also is two kshetrajna one is the living entity the soul and there is also the super soul the lord is also the kshetra and that lord is same for all living entities simple example just like a farmer has his plot of land so many farmers have their plot of land but the king he owns all the land similarly i have so i have this body this is like my field i am like a farmer i the soul and this is my kshetra but krishna he is there in the heart as paramatma he is there in all the uh, field of activity so therefore as sadakas we connect with that supreme lord in our heart constantly meditate upon him pray to him and then what happens is we eventually transcend the distinction between male and female and we are able to see everyone as an object of my service i have to serve them not as an object of my enjoyment and when everybody is in the mood of service then this world becomes a beautiful place so that so spirituality is makes sense so uh the field includes you know the whole life we are focusing only on this field of activity the eyes legs our senses basically and in one sense we are trapped we are unable to look beyond this our field of activity our you know when we say i want to be happy we look for pleasure we look for um, see we want to taste good are you okay we want to taste good food we want to smell nice things you know most of us even when we come to spiritual life the spirituality is all about feel good 
feel good spirituality there are three kinds of spirituality also one is mostly most common in india 99.9% of spirituality is feel good spirituality where you just go and the only focus is i feel, I feel good you know like i remember when i was going in the spiritual supermarket many years ago <laughs> trying to understand different many places where i would go they would you know when i enter that hall they would have four or five agarbatti packets removed and they would light it up and incense so pleasing to the nose and then nice visuals and then nice uh, music soft, soft music so you feel good that's needed i'm not denying it but that's where for many people spirituality ends you know some nice pleasing class where there is some nice jokes nice entertainment acha laga bas man khush ho gaya that is spiritual feel good and there's a second level of spirituality where iskon focuses a lot on which is process commitment commitment to a process when we commit to a process then we reap lot of rewards and then there is a third which is receiving grace where you listen your senses are alert to an intelligence beyond you and you are receiving grace so when we are chanting when we are when we are committed to a process we are actually trying to be attentive so that we can receive grace and when we receive grace we actually evolve so unfortunately what happens is many of us we live in the kshetra only even when we are practicing spiritual life we can't go beyond the body we are preoccupied with this body and therefore our spiritual life is also hollow and that's why we hear also sometimes scandals controversies because spiritual practitioners get distracted often by the externals of a spiritual path so once a king wanted to appoint a successor he said okay the my successor would be that person uh, there will be a competition so all the young men came so he said your challenge is by evening you have to reach this particular point that is your destination you should reach there by evening you can and it was not a long distance and so they thought okay it's such a simple exercise so they started the journey but as soon as they began they saw everywhere there were distractions there was some nice music going on somewhere there was some nice feast somewhere so so all those somewhere you know nice alfonso mangoes were kept <laughs> somewhere ice cream was kept all that all those things you know some where girls were dancing and all those music different different things but only one man was focused it's a, it's a simple parable we had heard as young boys and one man was focused and he reached the destination he didn't get distracted by anything so a spiritual practitioner is he who is not distracted by the kshetra and the activity surrounding the kshetra but when we are absorbed in the senses we forget time also just like in those are absorbed in spiritual life they transcend like i don't know if i experience this sometimes you know i have the shaligram worship in the morning i keep an alarm for very early morning so that i can get up and chant so say it's for 2 o'clock or 2:30 so when the alarm goes off you feel snooze kar do thoda aur so jaate hain 5 minute and then when you wake up thinking 5 minute to hour it's 3:30 <laughs> so 5 minutes become one and a half hours when your mob senses aisa hai that you know the power of senses when they are like absorbed or when they are like i mean we 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 have no control over it in sometimes so similarly in spiritual path also you know when if you are distracted by the kshetra bodily activities and bodily pleasures there is no end to how much distractions can be there so we have to know see i first first point was we explained and we understood that we have to know where we are we have to be in our limitation at the same time we have to aspire to transcend the bodily limitation because we all have limitations we all have we are living in a kshetra like i have a neighbor in my hometown where i stayed last two years ago for eight months so my neighbor he is what 80 years old he has never left the village and you know he does some puja part and all of that he has never left the village in his last 80 years of life and i was thinking oh that is the kshetra all there is the potential to transcend that he could have easily gone somewhere or it, but he was limited by that so similarly we as human only human being amongst all animals and species have the potential to transcend the limitations imposed by this kshetra mm. but we are not able to do it because amari buddhi simit we are not able to think beyond our body and mind 
like i have one barber also because i was in a village you know village teaches a lot of things village life simple things even walking like we walk on a marble floor cement floor but in villages when you walk barefoot on earth that itself gives you so much peace of mind we have disconnected i go to hanging garden i often do that i remove my shoes and i walk on the grass and i feel a complete difference so the small things we are not in touch you know we are here, here we live in an apartment in a building but house matlab zameen se connected hona chahiye then anyway, so many many things i learned one of the things i observed was one of the barber there he also never left the village for 80 for 60 years or 65 i was thinking and whole life is a nothing but barber giri so so now he has a so see what the point is is limited by kshetra but a human being can do much more he can go to many places similarly in an internal world we have allowed this body and mind to limit us and we have restricted ourselves to enjoying as a male or as a female we have not thought about life beyond bodily identity identity therefore we see because there is a kshetra a bird a bird has limitation right bird can fly but bird cannot run like a human being a human being we can't fly sabko apna apna ek restriction diya hai i i know one man who has always been in a cloth shop his entire life wo cloth shop ke bahar hi nahi gaya theek hai now i'm just saying that uska kshetra uska limitation ho gaya so when shukdev go swami is looking at these women as he is walking he is not looking at this limitation at all he is not seeing the restricted field of activity of the body he is looking at the knower of the field act- activity so basically whether whether you are a male or a female you go through enjoyment and suffering in this world i remember once we were with this holina radhana swami mara and one very famous bollywood actor female actor she came to temple and uh, <clears throat> so maharaj received her so we you know the guest reception team brought her and you know she had her own that energy wow oh, she has come honestly i don't know i don't remember her name now <laughs> but i know at that time there was a lot of oh, why uh, she has come so then it is interesting maharaj was speaking to her and uh, she gave a donation and there was courtesy exchanges thank you is it your first time to the temple oh swami ji i'm so happy wow and all that nice exchanges and then she went after she went uh, then we i went to mara's room mara was sitting and then very non challengingly he said one sentence you know which is hit us and uh, he said so we said mara she is a very famous actor or something mara said yeah but she is suffering so much in this body i said okay mose ek sentence nikal gaya you know she is suffering so much in this and she didn't speak anything about her suffering she didn't speak about her depression or she was just normally talking she is suffering so much in this body so that that's when i realized that he was seeing birth death old age disease and how even in a beautiful body she is suffering and how she needs to transcend you know like a young enthusiastic creature you know if he sees um, if he says okay for my class some karodpati has come or let's say uh, with a famous cricket player some bollywood superstar has come wow bre karodpati wow or ranveer kapoor has come but an advanced liberated soul somebody actually like shubhay goswami if he is internally developing those qualities and then he is giving a class and if a karodpati comes he will say bechara karodpati hai <laughs> <laughs> he will have compassion are ranveer kapoor aaya bechara kitna takleef mein hoga <laughs> bechara bolega usko hum log wow that that shows the difference between uh, a person identifying with the kshetra and one who is actually transcending so uh, the transcendental vision see it's nice to talk about it although see although i am not on that level but it it is it is helpful to talk, discuss this because we want to reach there right and we are all suffering because of this kshetra this body gives us suffering shela prophet would often quote this very famous bhajan anadi karma phale podi bhavar na bajale tori bare na dekhi upay anadi for long, from time immemorial we are suffering 
we are trapped in this field of activity anadi karma kalu and we are bound to a particular body you know male female the senses and the bhagavatam calls this body as navadwara pure dehi a city of nine gates i mean that is the way bhagavatam describes this body city of nine gates means nine gates are compared the nine holes of the body are compared to the nine gates the eyes ears nose mouth anus genitals so this is compared to the city of nine gates that is bhagavatam way of uh, explaining this and if you think of this body or as a city of nine gates what comes from these nine openings i mean anything that comes out of this bodily holes is not something which which you want to preserve and relish in fact a simple example if you don't brush your teeth for two days forget about others you yourself can't stand yourself so this body becomes an embarrassment and it can be obnoxious so therefore what a pure devotee does he doesn't condemn the body he just he sees beyond the body because why because it is temporary abhi temporary cheez se kya attach hona see dog if you see a dog chasing a car now sometimes the dog is chasing a car the dog is not able to understand that there is a driver driving the car so if i am chasing a body if i am chasing a person for not who he is inherently in a sense it's it's all about the body we are like a dog in one sense therefore shila prabhupad would speak about this uh, you know he would say often we can't imitate shukdev goswami but we need to understand that we are neither male nor female and understanding that see there are basically three things we have to understand to come out of body identification along with that there are two things one is practices and one is understand practices are there but when it comes to understanding we have to understand three things if we want to make spiritual advancement first we have to understand that this body is made up of pancha mahabhut earth water fire air ether and this body will ultimately become earth ashes or stew that is first second is body as nine holes and foul smelling and undesirable things come out of this world this is a, this is another understanding we need to and the third very very important the most important is krishna is the only purusha and we are all prakriti that means we want to just like a finger is as value only if it is connected to the body hand if the finger is chopped off and finger is kept on the table it has no use similarly we have exist identity we have value when we are serving the complete whole which is the lord so krishna is that purusha and when we fix ourselves as servant then we serve everyone and we serve the lord then we are in our constitutional position so basically we need to understand these three things to give up our purusha bhava and be situated as servant that is why in our names you know our initiation we get the name das and women get the name dasi we get the name whatever name you get it ends with das servant so the best part is even women have purusha bhava in this world it's not that only men are enjoy but women want to enjoy right so a man may marry a woman thinking okay you know she will obey me and i am the enjoyer you know may have this crazy idea in my have but he doesn't realize that she also has a desire to enjoy and she also has a purusha bhava and both bhavas will clash <laughs> both egos will clash right so so everybody has purusha bhava so therefore everybody if we cultivate the attitude that i am a servant i have to serve everyone because we are all children of god i remember once while distributing books in the local train of mumbai this was many years ago i had this service very unique service i don't do that now i would carry two bags full of bhagavad gita and small books and i would go in the local trains and make announcements and sell books and many of those poem sellers and pen sellers would think you know i'm like one of them and <laughs> they would exchange chutta utta lete the maharaj ka danda kaise chal raha hai i would chacha chal raha they would think i'm earning money out of it so we had lot of adventures and lot of things we saw and learned i remember in one particular uh, train compartment there was a big man sitting uh, you know he had a big mustache and tall up ka you know, he was like up ka bhaiya some big man and his wife was in all gungat and quiet like this so and we have a 
we are trained in book distribution seminar how to distribute books we are trained that when you see a couple you know one of the techniques which is taught to us that you should give the book in the hand of the lady and talk to the man <laughs> but the lady feels happy that she you know all those uh, experienced book distributors would share this kind of technique the lady feels happy that she's got some gift and the male ego is satisfied that okay you're talking to him humbly so we tried that technique so i gave the book to the lady and it was in her hand she didn't take it i couldn't even see her pura sa cover thi gungat patli si choti si aise baithi thi and her husband was i'm assuming it was her husband naturally husband is tab tak to mujhe laga aisa ho aisa baitha tha straight and he looked at me and said kya kar rahe ho and i was a young man that time i was just 25 this 20 i'm talking about 25 years ago story to wo bola ki acha kya kar rahe ho us tak baat rahe hain are naukri karo paisa kamao aisa kya kar rahe so then i said and i thought why argue with him you know i'll get some brony point let's say acha usko let me become humble he'll take one book I said, "Ah, sir, ah, sir. Ah, please, this book is a good book." And he kept giving Gyan loudly, and the whole compartment was hearing him. And it was like as if you know, and he felt happy. Everybody is listening to me, and I'm also humble. So I was like massaging his ego. And finally, after all that boring things he spoke, I said, "Okay." I said, "You take a book, so take it." So he felt compassion. He said, "Okay, okay. You just have to work hard, do work hard, do hard work. Okay? How much? So I said, forty rupees something. So till that time, he was like. in charge and the whole compartment was like wow you know big man speaking and his wife was all aise baithi thi and then when he paid that 50 rupees to me the moment he gave that lakshmi and i took it and suddenly i saw in that one moment that lady was sitting all the while like this her gungat open and she sat like this and she looked at him and she bet him as i was going to pehle mara us she said kya book lete rahte ho घर पे तारे किताब पढ़ा कुछ पढ़ता तो हो नहीं एंड शी स्टार्टेड लेफ्ट राइट सेंटर एंड दैट मैन फरन दी वो लाइक अ लायन ही बिकम अ माउस चुप हो गया वो चुप हो गया ऐसा एंड देन शी आ एंड देन आई रियलाइज हर फ्यूरी में डैड बी डायरेक्टेड टुवर्ड्स मी मैं आई रन एंड इट वाज जोगेश्वरी जोगेश्वरी स्टेशन ऑफ टू प्लेटफॉर्म सो आई रन अवे फ्रॉम देयर बट दैट आई स्टिल रिमेंबर दैट इंसिडेंट सो देन आई रियलाइज वाओ शी इज आल्सो पुरुष ओनली it is not that only purusha is purusha so in material world everybody is purusha <clears throat> so therefore so you got the book <laughs> i gave the book i got the money <laughs> and i hope he reads it one day basically she wasn't timid as i thought she was you know the point is everybody has their nature and even childhood you have seen children fight for a ball bag so that that purusha bhava is there deep rooted so spiritual life means cultivating the mood of service and because we have forgotten krishna therefore there is dukha krishna bhuliya jeev anadi bahirmuk ateva maya tare deha samsara dukh because we have forgotten our relationship with krishna we keep going through this suffering so service attitude is the best way we can cultivate spirituality and cultivate this ability to transcend bodily designations in fact chukde goswami was so special we are discussing about his personality he didn't take birth for you know 16 years right he was in the mother's womb hmm? and he said i can't come out because then i'm afraid of the illusory energy and his father said hey don't give trouble to me you come out you know we are both you, you, you my, myself and your mother we are suffering so much he said no maya will catch so then we have they said i assure you that you won't be trapped by the illusory energy. So then, Shukdev Goswami, while still in the womb, he told his father, "Who wants your assurance? The fact that you are saying, 'Don't give trouble to, I should not give trouble to you,' that means you are in duality. You are troubled. That means you are not, you are not fit to give me that assurance. You are saying in terms of bodily terms, the home, wife, family. So I can't take your assurance seriously. So then, Vasudev said, 'Okay, my dear son, whose assurance you need?'" He said, "I need assurance from the person who controls the illusory energy, Maya." So we have to say, "Okay." Then he went to Dwarka. He caught Krishna. He said, "Krishna, are you coming to my child? But then Krishna came from Dwarka, and he told the child in the womb, Sukhdev Goswami, that I assure you that Maya won't touch you. Come out. And your voice is so sweet. So he gave him the name Shuka, Shuka Goswami, Sukhdev Goswami, like a parrot. So he was so advanced before birth itself that Krishna had to come and. <laughs> Give him assurance to come out of the womb, and he was so sense controlled that once in one kingdom he was tested. A lot of sweets were put on his tongue, and he didn't sal- salivate. 
लाइक अगर हम बोलेंगे गुलाब जामुन अभी डिस्क्राइब करेंगे अभी सामने रखा नहीं है गुलाब जामुन जस्ट स्पीकिंग अबाउट इट यू नो यू कैन स्टार्ट फीलिंग हॉट जलेबी उसको डिस्क्राइब करेंगे कैसा क्रिस्पी है एंड टेक इट विद मिल्क एंड जस्ट हियरिंग द डिस्क्रिप्शन यू स्टार्ट सेलिंग बट उसके मुंह में रखा एक एक ड्रॉप नहीं आया सलाह बट ही वेंट अराउंड एफ अ डम एंड रिटार्डेड मैन Shila Prabhupada writes in one uh, purport in this section that present city of Delhi was formerly known as Astinapur because it was first established by King Asti. And Shukde Goswami, after leaving his paternal home, was roaming like a madman, and therefore it was not very it was very difficult for the citizens to recognize him in his exalted positions. Now here is a very important statement Shila Prabhupada writes: A sage is not therefore recognized by sight, but by hearing. one should approach a sadhu or a great person not to see him but to hear him if one is not prepared to hear the words of a sadhu there is no profit shukde goswami was a sadhu who could speak on the transcendental activities of the lord he did not satisfy the whims of ordinary citizens he was recognized when he spoke on the subject of shrimad bhagavatam and he never attempted jugglery like a magician outwardly appear to be retarded and dumb but in fact he was the most elevated transcendental person many times in india we go to a sadhu to get blessing aapka ghar hamare gorupal ko ka video na pagla wo pair rakhne ka ghar pe gaadi mein usko ka ek famous video hai so you know people want blessing but bhagavatam has many examples of great souls who were external appearing like madmen one of the best examples is rishabh dev he was like you know and there is one story of pralad maharaj he saw a saintly person was like when he started speaking then he realized is a very simple jadabharat jadabharat was a great example he was actually like mad now purposely purposely, purposely now now he could have see great souls can come in an elephant and declare that i am the greatest aa gaya hari bol now i have a question to all of you why do they hide their glories why can't shukdev goswami tell everyone see i am very great why, why do they why 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 these great souls don't um, speak about their glories why don't they present themselves as very advanced like in material world you know if an actor or anyone we want to speak a lot about ourselves but why great liberated souls don't speak about it they are self effacing why why are they like because of the humility they actually genuinely feel that they are nothing actually this is the most important reason aapne pehle hi bol diya they are actually very humble they feel i am nobody i am just whatever i am is by mercy of the lord and you know they are genuinely humble that is the Ultimate reason. What could be the other reasons why they are like that? They don't look for like adoration or the pleasure. They are already getting the. Pleasure. Ah, under se. Trip. Trip. Under se trip hai na. Usko bahar ka gali wali. Wo padega to usme aur wo like see I'm not a great fan of any politician, but I'm giving an example. For example, say you know Modi. Who gitta me gali pada is is converting it into votes. <laughs> like a, a successful businessman is he he gets he gets challenges he converts it into profits similarly a spiritualist is so absorbed in krishna who got problems now he makes more advance and as he rightly said as vishal prabhu said this a pleasure nahi mil raha is se name fame ke andar se wo raman raman kar raha ha atma ram atma ram मैंने पढ़ा था कि यू आर सो गुड that sometimes some other devotees got insecure seeing his herculean services so then he told uh, he consciously started not slowing down but not not glorifying himself or not he never glorified himself but he never presented his achievements to anyone because abhi kya he bechar intimidated ho jayega usko lagega are main kuch nahi kar raha hu basically that is one sense compassion that was a nice answer They don't want a following. Exactly, they don't want. Basically, why you know they don't want materialistic people to disturb them. Hmm. 
because they are absorbed in krishna they don't want to get this like jagannath das baba ji maharaj he would chant japa sometimes and people would come and worship him and so he would go to public toilet i'm talking about 1870 1880s mein wo kaisa raha raha hoga itna ganda false smelling he would go and sit there and chant so that nobody would come there <laughs> and disturb him he was so transcendental another reason is they don't want to get distracted so duniya se shila prabhupad says in one purport that a symptom of a great soul is he speaks wisdom he says a fool is unrecognized till he opens his mouth like everyone has symptoms right shila prabhupad says a rich man has symptoms and if he is coming in a lamborghini and next day he comes in you know another high end car so then you know that okay he's a wealthy man somebody has covid that person has symptoms symptoms hai malum hai ki symptoms se malum padta hai aadmi kaisa hai so similarly a uh, krishna conscious person also has symptoms what is the symptom of a krishna conscious person humble, humble. he will actually not glorify himself he will glorify krishna he has nothing to speak about himself he wants to always speak about the lord so that is a symptom of a krishna conscious person so this is the uh, this is actually the main reason he just wants to glorify apna apne bare mein kya bolna and a pure devotee is not a pure devotee because he has a saffron color or he has a turban and you know nice outfit or uh, you know is basically he is is vani sadhu darshan is not as important as sadhu shravan of course darshan is also good you know meeting a great soul is always beneficial but more important is uh, hearing from him. but the essence of this we have taken two verses 5 and 6 the essence is we have to come to an understanding that we are not male we are not female we are all servants of krishna and we have to understand that this body is simply a bag of you know stool urine pus mucus this is and when we connect to the lord that is a platform of uh, living peaceful now as long as we have a desire to enjoy this is the uh, very very important thing as long as we have a desire to enjoy we can't see this reality of soul to to experience the soul we have to come to the platform of service see there are there are three 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 areas where we can live one is body body level means pleasure food khane ko mil raha enjoying senses now interestingly body's capacity to see the the senses capacity to enjoy reduces with age right capacity reduces but desires don't reduce and if you are focused on body whole life will get frustrated so right now in the world 1 billion there are 800 million people suffering from starvation they have no food to eat and there are 1 billion people which means 200 million more they are suffering because of overeating obesity obesity so what does this mean this means ki wo body se jara suffering aa raha hai enjoyment se so modern society is a very con- paradox you know contradiction modern society talks about peace on one hand we talk about peace we have to have peace and on the other hand we are talk we are increasing the desires of people the way we advertise the way we promote enjoy enjoy so you consume more and more and more like shamanand bro says consumer matlab wo consume 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 and mar <laughs> you die consuming that is customer kasht kasht karke maro customer <laughs> so on the one hand we are increasing desires and we are also talking about peace ye nahi aayega kyunki body ka inherent limitation hai hmm? so um, so 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 there's one level bodily level pe humko kabhi peace nahi milega dusra mind ke level pe now <clears throat> this is interesting uh you know when people say okay i am not interested in bodily pleasures so much but i want love mm. now everybody talks about when you talk about love you know everybody imagines most people imagine i am loved somebody loves me somebody gives me attention love ka pura very idea is that okay lowest level is i am body so i want i want pleasure that is gross i want pleasure some people transcend that but they come to the level of i want love but that also will not give you happiness only when i come to the stage i want to love <laughs> i want i want to love i want to serve i want to give love 
देन द होल गेम चेंजेस आप देखोगे अरे कहां से इतना आनंद आ रहा Now the key is to give the keys, and that's when we we actually transcend body and mind. I don't know if you've seen even in this world, even examples like Warren Buffet. I've read his story. Oh, देता रहता है. कुछ तो मिलता रहेगा उसको देने में भी. <laughs> okay, somebody may say, okay, मैं somebody may have other agenda, you know. Or Abdul Kalam is also like that. There are many people who lived simply. Like I know one person who was a physics professor. He raised a big family of nine uh, siblings and lot of things, and he was only. he was giving tuitions and helping people not taking any money from them so i was i, I observed his life for many years he was not a hari krishna devotee but he was very contented i was thinking oh, oh contentment aa kaha aa kaha aa kaha se raha hai it is coming because he, he could live with less things because he was giving so the needs of the body and the mind automatically reduce this is opposite of see there is a different between starvation and fasting Yeah. you all agree yeah. similarly there is a different between poverty and voluntary life of poverty <laughs> it's not that we all should live a voluntary life of poverty i'm just saying you know minimalist is a big organ a big movement now <laughs> just just uh, accumulating and uh, amassing wealth and possessions will not give us that peace but there is also another interesting dynamics here i'll end with this That there are serious issues even amongst people who are serving and still they are not. Up. I want to touch upon that also for a couple of minutes because that also can happen that you may be serving for many years and still you may not experience that. That is because we are at level zero where we are only doing rituals. We have we have confused ritual to be spiritual. Mm. That's the it's not the act of service. There has to be uh, there has to be a connection to the to a reality beyond ourselves. Like when we chant, when we meditate, when we are present, when we listen, then we experience. You know, it's like you know this uh, shushupti deep sleep. Have you experienced this? When you're deep sleep, even if you get for fifteen twenty minutes, it's like you feel so fresh. The so samadhi. But to talk about samadhi of this liberated souls, what they experience, it is compared with the shushupti, the deep sleep where there are no dreams, no disturbance. वो जो एक्सपीरियंस होता है बट इट इज हायर देन सुषुप्ति बिकॉज़ देयर इज अवेयरनेस इन सुषुप्ति इन डीप स्टेट देयर इज नो अवेयरनेस बट इन समाधि दो लिबरेटेड सोल्स यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दे आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग दे आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग द पीस ऑफ डीप स्लीप अलोंग विद अवेयरनेस ऑफ देयर सराउंडिंग्स दैट इज लेवल 1 व्हेन दे आर प्रेजेंट व्हेन दे आर अटेंटिव बट देयर इज अ हायर लेवल देन दैट लेवल 2 व्हिच इज भक्ति योगा व्हेयर देयर इज सर्विस बट देयर इज कनेक्शन टू द लॉर्ड दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट and we are all naturally inclined to connect to the lord see a simple example if you light fire fire always goes up because fire will go to the source sun water flows down towards the ocean because so if you keep you know if you keep 100 calves the calf will know where to go to the mother so that we all have a natural proclivity that is a law let's say that's like there is law of gravity there is a law of us being naturally inclined to go to our source so if we can connect to that source through meditation prayer and offering of our heart and emotions to krishna then that experience will keep us contented and then we will not feel bored in such otherwise i read letters of mother teresa also and a lot of correspondence she had with her uh, friend to pura hai wikipedia mein bahut sare pages hain about how she was also going because sir only service but i would like to give her the benefit of doubt because that that limitation must be in the space of you know deep connection also it could be that also you know ki you know sometimes when you love someone very much you may cry in front of that person but that crying is also love only so similarly she may be expressing lamentation but she may be in the space of experiencing deep union with the lord but still i'm saying that it's possible that a person is serving but feeling a vacuum it's very much possible when a person is not connected within himself with the lord so therefore this is very very important and uh, we, have, we have discussed only two verses na no? five and we'll, we'll chant the seven and eight also and we'll complete this section the seven and eight we'll chant seventh verse katam va pandave yasya katam va pandave yasya rajar sher muni nasah samvada samabhutata samvada samabhutata 
How did it so happen that King Parikshit met this great sage, making it possible for this great transcendental essence of the Vedas, Bhagavatam, to be sung to him? Now, Shonagarish is asking how the emperor of planet and Shukde Goswami met, how they met. And there was no planning done, there was no SMS sent, there was no, you know, you have sent those messages, no email sent. So, and for seven, and this is a person, he met, he stayed with Parishit Maharaj for seven days and seven nights. He never stayed in any place for more than a few minutes. So he's surprised. How could Sukhdev Goswami speak for seven days and seven nights to Parishit Maharaj? And that is the last verse of this section. Verse 8, we'll chant this and end the class. Sago dohana matram hi Griheshu griha medina Avekshate mahabhagas Tirti kurvam sadashramam he, Shukde Goswami, was accustomed to staying at the door of a householder only long enough for a cow to be milked. And he did this just to sanctify the residence. How long does it take to milk a cow? 10 to 15 minutes max. And then another 10 to 15 minutes to boil it. So, Shukde Goswami never stayed in a place for more than 30 minutes. And now here he is spending 7 days and 7 nights with his emperor. Why? We want to know. So this is how they have asked questions on two topics out of the three on how the Bhagavatam was spoken and second about Shukde Goswami and next section, next class, we will take the verses where they will ask questions about King Parikshit. Who was he? How was he a great devotee? Once those questions end, which is in verse number 13, then the entire chapter will begin answering the three questions and that's how the rest of the uh, 15 chapters will cover answers to these three questions. The origin of Bhagavatam, personality of Shukde Goswami, and Parishit Maharaj. Is that okay? Hare Krishna. Grantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Prabhupada ki jai. Any last minute, any comment or questions? Just one. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.